continuing our conversation on state question 777, which has become known as the right to farm bill. And we're here with Roy Lee Lindsay with the Oklahoma Port Council mm -hmm. and then the former uh, Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma Attorney General, I should say, Drew Edmondson. Thank you both for being in here with us. Do you want to get to some viewer questions that we had mm -hmm. sent in? This statement was sent in from Chris. Uh, want to get both of your reactions here on this. He says, let's just say the average person can't read this bill and understand it. That alone should be enough to vote it down. Anytime government uses a title on a bill that says you have a right, it's probably not a bill for the people, but corporations instead. Drew, you first. Well, in my view, the prime beneficiaries of this thing would be the huge corporations that, that are running them, not all of which, you know, the largest hog producer in, in, uh, in Beaver, Harper, and Ellis counties, uh, Richfield Farms is Chinese owned. And they get the rights under 777 uh, to be free from future regulation. And uh, it's just not right. So the, the viewer's correct, a uh, right to be suspicious. This is not a good bill for individual citizens, consumers, uh, or people who like to drink clean water. Really? Well, First of all, I, I think that's uh, every time Drew wants to say that you're going to be free of regulation, he just is misleading the public. Um, Attorney General Edmund, or Attorney General Pruitt has told us very plainly that the legislature retains the right to regulate clean water, um, and that's what the compelling state interest language is in there for. We believe clean water is important. That's why we included that language so that the legislature could still act in those terms. So to say there won't be regulation just is is not accurate. In terms of who's gonna benefit from this, the folks that are most able to comply with new regulation are the folks with the biggest pocketbook. So the guy who's gonna benefit the most from being protected from government overreach is the smaller farmer. He's the guy who least has the resources to go out and compete, to go out and deal with regulation as, as new regulations come in. He's the one that's gonna benefit. That's why when you look at the membership of the organizations that are supporting this question, from the Farm Bureau to the cattlemen, to Oklahoma Farmers Union. They're individual family farmers. They're not this large corporation that Drew wants to talk about. They're, they are the individuals out on the land every day. And the last thing, we're kind of ending time here, but the last thing, Barry Switzer has been very vocal about this in opposition to 777 because he's an animal lover. Uh, he says, if this passes, it's possible that, you, that farmers, ranchers could classify dogs as you know, cattle, you know, or you know, dogs as livestock, I should say, is a better phrasing for that. Therefore, you have puppy mills, you could have horse slaughtering farms. Is that possible with the passing of 777? No. Uh, I mean, Why? we already have laws on the books that say, uh, that prevent, uh, that regulate puppy mills. We already have laws on the books that ban cockfighting. Uh, federal government already prohibits horse slaughter. So none of those things are gonna happen. Again, this is just a tactic from the other side to scare folks. We intentionally left all of the rules and regulations that were in place on uh, December of 2014 in place so that those practices that had already been prohibited by law would remain prohibited by law. So this notion that there's suddenly gonna be a puppy mill on every corner okay. is just nonsense. Okay, and uh, no, do you disagree? Nobody or? said a puppy mill on every corner, but livestock is not defined in 777. It is defined in Oklahoma statutes as any animals kept in captivity. So would apply to any animals raised for profit, and that would include puppies, it would include exotic animal farms, uh, it would include cockfighting. Legislature doesn't have to repeal the ban on cockfighting, all they have to do is reduce the penalty. And if you'll recall from those years, the legislature wouldn't ban cockfighting. It took a vote of the people to finally do it. Uh, the same with puppy mills, they can reduce those uh, restrictions and penalties uh, through legislative action. So there is a genuine risk uh, to animals. Switzer was also concerned about water. He spoke about animals and he spoke about protecting our water. Roy Lee Lindsay, Drew Edmondson, thank you so much for being with us here, shedding a little bit of light on what a lot of people are thinking is a, a convoluted bill right now, not really understanding it. So of course we thank you for your time and this will be one of the seven state issues that people will go vote on on November 8th. So thanks to you again.